In this first video, I'm going to explain the first few steps of the Yao method, which involve solving two centers opposite one another, and then solving three edged pairs around one of those centers. So the first step in the Yao method is to solve two centers opposite one another. So in this example, we're going to solve the white center first. So we'll do those two like that, and then pair up these two and put them on the bottom. Um, note that before teaching this, you should be already familiar with solving 4x4 centers uh, using the reduction method. So we've solved the white one, now it's time to solve the yellow one. So we'll pair up these two, and pair up these two, and insert them like so. So doing the first two centers is the exact same in both the Yao method and the reduction method. The next step is where we get a little bit different. So in the reduction method, what we would do is rotate the cube and solve the remaining four centers. But in the Yao method, the next step is to actually solve three cross edges around this white centerpiece or around the yellow centerpiece, either one. To keep our tutorials consistent, we're going to solve the three cross edges around the white face each time. So because there are no centers solved around this middle ring, we can actually use this entire face to actually help us pair up edges. So we don't, we're not worrying at all about what happens to the center pieces around here. So we can really just do outer slice rotations, so out, outer face rotations, and as well as rotate around this middle layer uh, using wide turns, because we don't, have, we don't really care what happens to these center pieces. All we're trying to do is solve three cross edges onto this face. Personally, I like to hold the center around which we are solving the three cross edges on the left hand side. Uh, when you're starting out as a beginner to the Yao method, it can also be quite easy to hold it on the bottom, uh, but I like to hold it on the left because it gives me a better view of when I'm pairing up edges and actually inserting them. Additionally, if we hold it on the left hand side, it saves us a rotation after solving these cross edges when we go into solving the rest of the centers. So as I said before, we can use this middle layer to actually help us pair up edges uh, far more easily. And I think the best way to show you pairing up edges is just to do a few examples. It's also important to know your color scheme very well because we actually need to solve the cross edges into the correct positions relative to one another on the cube. So in this example, the first two cross edges that I see are this white and blue one and this white and blue partner over here. So how we can solve these is actually quite easy. All we need to do is three moves. So what we can do is do an R2 to bring this one down here to the bottom, then do a U prime, move that one there, and do an R to pair them back up, and then to insert it into the cross face, into the cross layer, we can just do a U. So now we've solved this white and blue uh, edge pair into our cross layer. The next edge pair that I saw on the cube was this white and green one and its white and green partner over here. So what we can do is do an F prime. So this white and green one is now down here, and this white and green one is up here. And all we need to do to pair them up is do an R2 like that. So a wide R2 brings this one from down the bottom here, up here to match its partner. And then what we need to do is insert this white and green edge pair opposite the white and blue one. So we need to put these two into this position here. We can do this in a few ways. One way we can do this is by doing a U2 and then a B like that, or we can do something like L2 and then F prime. So we insert the white and green one here after moving this blue and green one, uh, blue and white one to the back there. So these two are correct relative to one another and all that we need to do is solve one last cross edge uh, to solve three of them on this uh, left hand side. So the pieces that I see at the moment are this white and, white and uh, orange one and this white and orange one. So we can pair up these two this one here and this one here by simply doing a D to move this white sticker from there to there and then do a wide R to move that up. So this is where we need to be a little bit more familiar with our color scheme. So we need to figure out whether this edge pair belongs here or belongs here. And at the moment we have this green one and we know that uh, directly above the green will be the red edge. So below the green goes the orange edge like that. So now we've solved these three cross edges into the left hand side relative to one another, cor correctly relative to one another. You also don't need to solve two opposite edges first and then solve the last one. You can also solve, for example, two edges adjacent to one another and then solve the last one. Um, that's uh, really personal preference and you might find that in different solves it's a little bit advantageous to do adjacent and in other solves you might find that the edges you pair up 
the first two edges you pair up are in fact opposite ones. Uh, it really depends on the solve. So here we've again solved this yellow centre and the white centre opposite to one another, and again we're going to solve three white cross edges around this white centre. The first two matching edge pieces that I see are this white and blue one here and the white and blue one here. And this is again a, quite an easy case. So all we need to do to put these two into the cross layer is do a U, uh, U prime to move this one from here to back here. Then we can slice to pair them up and simply do a U to insert them into this left face. The next edge pair that's immediately visible to us are the white and green edge pieces. So here for these two, I would do something like this. So I'll probably rotate uh, like that. Then to pair these two up, we can do something like R. So wide R to hide this one in the back. U to move this one across here. Then do an R prime to pair these two up. Uh, and finally to solve them, what we can do is do a U2 F prime because remember that this white and blue pair was back here. So, whoops. So to put these two opposite this, we can do U2 F prime. Alternatively, you could do for something like L2B, or it doesn't really matter, as long as they go opposite to one another in an efficient manner. As I was messing around with that, the last edge pair came up really easily, so we just have one slice move to pair up this white and orange one with this white and orange one, and it belongs here. So below the uh, white, and, white and green edge is, the, is where the white and orange edge belongs. So just do an F prime to solve that. And again, we've solved our three cross edges around our white center. So solving these three cross edges around this uh, center piece is actually probably the hardest new thing that you need to learn in, in order to learn the Yao method for speed solving the 4x4. The hardest part is probably keeping track of what you've solved, as well as being familiar enough with your color scheme that you don't have to think too much when you're inserting more cross edges. Beyond that, you will need to spend a, spend a bit of time just becoming familiar with using this middle slice to actually pair up edges far more efficiently than previously where we did have to worry about resolving our centers. With practice, you'll certainly get better in inserting these three cross edges efficiently, as well as uh, thinking less and less about exactly where they go as you become uh, far more familiar with your color scheme. So the main tip I can give you at the moment is just to think about it in terms of uh, where they belong relative to one another around this sort of left-hand face. So uh, I like to think about it in terms of uh, anchoring to the white and green one, the, right, the white and green edge, and anchoring to the white and blue edge. So I know that if I have a white and green edge here, the edge that belongs above it is the white and red, and the edge that belongs below it is the white and orange. And similarly, it's the opposite uh, on the blue side. So if I've solved the blue and white edge, then I know that the blue and orange edge belongs uh, above it, and the blue and, sorry, and the, uh, the white and red edge belongs below it. So that's how I like to think about solving my edges, but you can come up with your own ways as well. It's very flexible. Look ahead for this step will be quite challenging at first. So really just keep your focus to solving only one edge pair at a time. So you're only worrying about two edge pair pieces at a time. In the next video, I'm going to show you how we solve the remaining four centers around this middle slice without messing up what we've already solved, as well as insert our last cross edge.